Hey everyone, we just took a 5 hour train ride from Bolzano to Rome and after arriving at Rome's Termini station, we headed straight to our hotel because we're ready to dive into this city's magic. Let's get started. First stop, the Colosseum. This place is insane. Nearly 2,000 years old and it still stands here, telling stories of gladiators, epic battles and wild crowds. Walking around, you can almost hear the echoes of the past. Definitely the perfect spot to kick off our Roman adventure. From there, we made our way to this massive white monument. Yep, that's the Vittorio Emanuele Secchi monument. Also called the wedding cake by locals because of its unique design. It's huge, impressive, and if you make it to the top, the view over Rome is absolutely worth it. We just took a minute to soak it all in. Unreal. Quick heads up about Rome. The traffic here is absolutely nuts. Seriously, it's like a real life game of survival of the fittest. You have to keep your eyes open because cars, mopeds and buses are flying around everywhere. And they don't always stop for pedestrians. So if you're walking around Rome, stay sharp and be ready to jump out of the way. The city is like an open air museum. And the best part, no admission fee. Make sure to bring your sneakers because the best way to explore this city is on foot. Then it was time for something classic, the Trevi Fountain. So the tradition goes, if you throw a coin over your shoulder, you're guaranteed to come back to Rome. Obviously, we tossed our coins in. And then, well, we had to get some gelato because when in Rome, right? I was absolutely blown away by the Marcus Aurelius column here in Rome. The details left me almost speechless. Next up, the Pantheon. This building is super impressive. It's a nearly 2000 year old temple with this massive dome and a hole at the top that lets in natural light. It's like stepping back in time. Can't believe how well it's held up after all these centuries. Nearby, there are a lot of good food spots. So take a look around if you're hungry. Near the Pantheon is Piazza Navona and you absolutely have to stop there for an aperitivo. We went with an Aperol Spritz and a Negroni Sbagliato. There's always great music here and the evening vibe is amazing. When you cross the Tiber, you'll find yourself on one of the coolest restaurant streets I've ever seen. Bring a little patience though. Rome is always packed, but it's totally worth the wait. Of course, no trip here would be complete without talking about the food. We had some authentic carbonara and it was next level good. Real Roman pasta and it didn't break the bank either. The food here is amazing and you don't have to splurge to eat well. My recommendation is to see the Colosseum at night. It looks absolutely majestic surrounded by a beautiful evening glow. And remember, Rome never sleeps. On day two, we took a taxi to the Vatican. Keep in mind, a taxi ride costs around 20 euros, about 22 USD. But even the taxi ride itself is an exciting experience in Rome. Arriving at St. Peter's Basilica in the smallest country in the world, we were completely overwhelmed. So much energy in such an epic place. Unfortunately, we didn't go to the museum because the line was a bit too long. But even just being here, you can really feel the significance of the place. Next, we hit up Via Condotti, Rome's luxury shopping street. We didn't go too crazy here, but it's fun to window shop and take in all the high-end stores. Just around the corner are the Spanish Steps, a great place to chill out and do some people watching. There's this little fountain called Barcaccia at the bottom, and it's a whole vibe.
We actually wanted to visit the Pantheon from the inside, but unfortunately the line was miles long so we skipped it. But hey, in Rome, you're always bound to find something else to see. Off to the next spot. If you're really hungry, I recommend checking out Antico Vinayo just off a side street behind the Pantheon. They serve amazing bread with porchetta. Bring some patience though, the wait is usually around 30 to 45 minutes. Our next spot, the Circus Maximus in Rome, was originally built as an ancient chariot racing stadium, hosting large public games and events, including gladiator fights. It could hold up to 250,000 spectators. Today, it's a public park and historical site where visitors can explore the ruins and imagine the thrilling races that once took place there. In the summer, the site also hosts many concerts and events adding a modern touch to its historic setting. As the sun started to set, we made our way to the Lungo Tever along the Tiber River. This spot is perfect for just walking and taking in the lights of the city reflecting on the water. Honestly, Rome in the evening is something else. Such a chill way to end the day. In the height of summer, it's much cooler here and the area is filled with restaurants and shops, making it a lively place to relax and enjoy the atmosphere. And to wrap it all up, we even went to an Italian concert. The atmosphere was absolutely amazing. There's something so special about experiencing live music here in Rome. It was the perfect way to close out the trip blending modern vibes with all the history we've been soaking up. Thanks for tagging along on our Rome adventure. We saw so much, ate way too well, survived the traffic, and had an absolute blast. Can't wait for the next adventure. Until then, ciao Rome, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more adventures.